Now we're back to doing that. For more on this developing story, let's bring in uh, Ryan Morrow. He's a national security analyst at the Clarion Project. And we have something else we were going to talk to you about, Ryan. But let's put that on hold for a second. First off, your reaction to Shoe Bomber 2. Well, what surprises me is that normally when they have a failed plot, uh, they then scrap that tactic and then they move on to something else and hit you with uh, something that you're not prepared for. What this indicates to me is that they believe that they can somehow get past our security precautions that we've put in in response to the original shoe bombing plot. So whether that's a new type of explosive or some new way to get it past security, uh, who knows? But, but that's what's really frightening to me. You're just so saying it's a sustained, bold confidence they have to bypass the security that we have in place. Right, because normally what you would think they would do is they'd say, okay, we tried the shoe bomb plot, the Americans and the Western world are prepared for that and they know how to detect it, so we're going to try something else, put explosives in ink cartridge or something like that. Okay. But instead they're sticking to the shoe bomb tactic because apparently I guess they've improved that device. Well, right. let's hope we don't find out anytime soon, right. unless it's intelligence, we'd right. find out exactly what they're talking about. Uh, while it's kind of, it's pretty specific, Although it does not affect any domestic flights here in the United States, just flights into and out of the United States. Uh, what does it tell you about the fact that uh, there's no specific intel about the plot? Well, it, it, there doesn't have to be specific intelligence about the plot itself, but there can be specific intelligence about the fact that they're training people and saying, okay, this is the general tactic that we're going to use. It might just be a loose plot where they say to a bunch of operatives, you guys figure out all the details, but this is what we want you to do. All right, now, Ryan, uh, one of the reasons you're here, and we moved you up to respond to this terror plot uh, that could have happened earlier, but we want to talk about something else. If I think of a terror camp, I'm thinking Yemen, I'm thinking Somalia, I'm thinking Pakistan. What you're finding is we might, as ha we might have as many as 22 so-called villages and at least one terror camp as even in uh, domestically as in in texas right the clarion project who i work for we broke this story uh, about how a terrorist enclave has been detected in texas we know this from declassified fbi documents there was originally some broad intelligence about it and so we started investigating we figured out the group's front organizations that they were using in texas and then some activists from a group called act for america went and verified the specific location so that we made sure that we we definitely knew what we were talking about and then we got declassified fbi documents and confirmed it from that end uh... so we know for a fact that this organization that runs the 22 villages, as they call them, also have one in Texas. How long has this uh, village in Texas been running, or any of the other 22? Is that known? Yes. Uh, the leader in Pakistan, Sheikh Jalani, came to the United States and started setting these places up in 1980. According to the locals, this specific camp started being set up in the late 1980s in Texas, uh, and the FBI detected some movement to this camp in uh, December of 2001. Do we Why have any he... evidence of, of anything bad that they've done so far? Yes. Uh, according, again, to the FBI documents, and this was previously known, they've engaged in all sorts of murders and bomb plots. Uh, but after one of their camps in Colorado was shut down, they decided to pull back a little bit because they didn't want to sacrifice their entire network. But they are still preaching jihad. They still follow this radical Pakistani cleric that they basically believe is God. And they are a dangerous group. And you can see it in the language of the FBI documents that we've released. All right, here's a map of all the 22 that, you, that have been identified and looked at. Now, we think the FBI has identified this as a, a group to watch, but have they said a terror group and has Homeland Security got on board with that? Well, this is the interesting thing. They are considered a domestic organization, and because they are American citizens, it becomes very difficult to tackle them. Yes, if they find specific information about a specific individual doing something illegal, will they get them? Of course. But most of what they do is legal. They go right up to that sure. line. And, right, and the reason they're able to operate in the United States is because the State Department doesn't consider this group, Jamaat al fukra a foreign terrorist organization. They operate in the United States under the name Muslims of the Americas. And by the way, their headquarters is in New York State. It's a place actually called Islamburg. They have a sign when you go yep. there that says Islamburg. We've heard about that. It's troubling. And now we know 22 villages across the country. Ryan Morrow, thank you very much for bringing this to our attention. Thank you. We All hope right. they're watch being watched.